Don't spend it yet. Hold on to that refund for just a little bit and let's take a different perspective to your money. Hi guys, this is Adis Boucher, the new money mama. I use my experiences as a financial counselor and my Jedi powers to assist my clients in living the abundant life now. Today's video is inspired by tax season. Some of you are dreading having to pay taxes, that deadline's approaching. But a lot of you are excited about getting the tax refund and my clients are no exception. And if you've got debt, one of your favorite things to do with your tax refund is pay down debt. Well, Adi, so what do I do with my tax refund then? Wait, just wait. Look at the facts, look at the data. Once, when we're in our emotional part of our brain, it shuts off the data part, the logical part. So feel the emotions like, yay, the money's here. Oh, I can't wait to pay down that debt. Feel the emotions, right? Write it out on a piece of paper. I feel excitement because, or I feel frustrated because, whatever it is, get that emotion done with. But wait till that emotional wave comes back down. Don't make decisions when you're at the height of your emotion, like, oh, I just wanna get rid of that, or I don't wanna think about that anymore. Wait till that comes down and then go, okay, how else could I look at my money? How else could I look at my financial situation? So now in this video, I'm gonna give you an order, generally speaking, of how to prioritize your tax refund. So I can't look at your money one-on-one. -on -one. I can do that for my clients and give them specific advice. But since we're just meeting right here and I can't look at your money, um, take this guideline and then use wisdom to apply your tax refund. So when people ask me and say, hey, what do I do with my tax refund? The answer is always, well, it depends. Where are you in your money now? Uh, one person can be in a different place in their money than the next person. And so there's gonna be different strategies. But go through this list. First thing, do you have a savings account? You've gotta have a savings account, because guess what? Let's say you pay off all your debts. Then what happens when the tires blow out next week and you gotta replace tires on your car? You go into debt. So wouldn't it be nicer if you have a savings account and you can pay for the tires instead of having to go further into debt or into debt again. Nothing's as frustrating as getting out of debt, finally! And then a month later, it's like, oh, I'm in debt again. It's so disheartening, it's dispiriting, where you're just thinking like, wow, I can never get out of this hole, or why do I find myself in the same predicament over and over again? So the first place to check is, do I have a safety net fund? Do I have savings to cover things that will come up? So if you don't have that, set aside money for savings. Now, Dave Ramsey says you should set aside first $1,000 for a safety net. Well, guess what? He's been saying that for 20 years. How much does gasoline cost now? Now think back, 20 years, how much did gasoline cost then? So $1,000, what it could do 10 years ago, it's not the same thing that it can do today. So if you can only set aside $1,000 of your tax refund, do it, fine. But what I recommend is that you look at what emergencies or surprise experiences have come up for you. And if they tend to be in the $2,000 range, set aside $2,000. Okay, so first, put some money into your safety net fund. If you've already got some money in there, maybe add a little bit. You know what the minimum is that you need to cover unexpected emergencies. Okay, number two, apply the cash flow index to your debts. Make a list of all the debts that you have, all the names, all the balances left, and all of the minimum payments. Write them down. Also, next to each one, write down if they're current, or are they behind three months, or are they being sent to collections, get data, get it all down. Use my other video about the cash flow index to figure out what order you should pay down those debts. Number three, foresee any upcoming storm clouds. So for example, if you are pregnant, you know there's a baby coming within the next few months. Do you need to set money aside for those medical bills? Or if your car has been sputtering lately, you know that you've got to set some money aside for a car replacement or car repairs. What storm clouds are coming? Jot that down and know 
Hmm, about how much money am I going to need in the next few months? Number four, once you have your savings in place, you have a list of all of your debts, you know what storm clouds are coming. Number four is to go back to that list of debts, look at the cash flow index and start paying them off by the lowest index. Now, there are some exceptions to this. If you have some debts that are not as low on the index, but they're threatening collections, or they're about to foreclose on you, or they are maxing out your credit card, and so it's bringing your credit number down, and you're trying to buy a house, then those will start moving up in line. However, no matter what action is being taken on it, I always encourage you to face those demons, pick up the phone, call, try to negotiate something. You know, one of the, well, first off, my very first client was from someone who avoided the phone and avoided collectors. And once she finally got the courage to get on the phone and call and negotiate, she was able to free up $300 a month. And that helped her to catch up and pay off debts. This is actually a common response for a lot of people when they feel like they're behind and there's no hope they don't face the demons sometimes when you face the demons you find out they're little pig squeaks or they're more willing to work with you than you think so um, call negotiate before you start paying things down little caveat when you negotiate never give them access to your bank account never give them direct access and always get their offer in writing so whether they email it or they mail it to you. Number five, evaluate what caused the debt in the first place. Was it an occasional thing or a rare thing? Was that an emergency? Did you have savings in place? Is it something that happens regularly every month? Are you always falling short of money and having to charge groceries onto a credit card? Are you feeling deserving of a raise? What's going on? You can, only you can actually take a look at that and decide, why do I keep finding myself in this place? Where am I avoiding meeting my challenges? Or where am I doing the same thing over and over to cause a problem? Now, if you do it over and over, no big deal doesn't mean that it's not solvable. But we've got to take a look at what's causing the hole before we know how tall to make the ladder to dig out or climb out of that hole. Okay, and bonus tip. Bonus tip is when you're getting large tax refunds, talk to a tax accountant and find out about changing your exemptions on your W-4. Because if you're getting a tax refund, it means that you've been giving away your money to the government for free. Money that really you could have been using each month towards your investments, savings, or spending goals. It's tax refund time. Woo, money is raining from the sky. Well, I got another video on that, but when you get that money, it's so exciting to be able to pay down things and be able to live those dreams you have in your mind of the things you want to do with extra money. But once you celebrate, bring the emotions down and take a look at your money differently. You've got to look at it differently. You know why? Because most people have this unsolicited advice or they all have got ideas of how to become rich or become prosperous, but they're not prosperous or rich themselves. You know, you have to find out from people who have been at the lowest and can show you how they got to where they are today. Guys, life is rich. It, it's all around us. It's just about looking at it differently and interacting with it differently. All right, that's good for today. My name is Adise Boucher. I'm the new Money Mama, reminding you, life is rich and so are you.